if you ever looked at your portfolio statement and you saw that some stocks were up and some stocks were down over the course of, say, the past quarter, and you said, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to not have owned those stocks that went down that quarter, then sector and group rotation is probably the strategy that would be very interesting for you. Hey, everybody, Serge Berger here, your host of the Steady Wealth Podcast. Great to be here. The summer months are heating up. It's actually, can't tell, but it's really hot here in the studio in my office. But we're going to power through this and talk about sector and group rotation. It's arguably the number one strategy that I see people interested in. So when we talk to clients at Blue Marlin Advisors, our investment advisory firm, or of course, on the steady trader side as well, and we talk to them about strategies for their portfolios or things they would like to do and things that intuitively make sense to them. Sector and group rotation time and time again is absolutely the number one thing that comes up. And just for quick FYI, I met an actual billionaire, like with a B, two weeks ago, I think two or two and a half weeks ago. And we talked about all sorts of things. We talked about the markets. We talked about macroeconomics, politics, globally, this and that, interest rates, commodities, the whole thing. When it came down to strategy, as soon as I started talking about sector and group rotation and the portfolio that is one of the portfolios that I manage at Blue Marlin, he started perking up more so than he did about any other topics. And that was, it was a stark reminder or just an honest reminder to me that is what people care about being allocated to certain stocks or bonds or whatever the asset class is at certain times, but not at other times when they're not doing well. And obviously that makes a lot of sense. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through sector and group rotation as a strategy and as a technique. But first we even do that. Do let me, do let me just quickly be clear that diversifying a portfolio. So having a diversified portfolio is important. I really believe everyone should have a longer term asset allocation model, but this is the thing. And this is why sector and group rotation is so important because a diversified portfolio does not mean that we are going to hold on to all these stocks all the time. It means that there will be changes made to that portfolio as we go through the economic cycle. So let's talk about this. Let's unpack this. There's a whole bunch of things to unpack here. So hopefully by the end of the next 15, 20 or so minutes, you can have a really good idea of what sector and group rotation is. Maybe you'll want something like that managed for you, which we can do at Blue Marlin Advisors. Or of course, if you want more advisory on that, more sort of trade alerts and that kind of stuff, we can do that over on the steady trader. Let's get into it. So first of all, to keep in mind, there are a bunch of different sectors. So if you think about this, if you, I'm looking at my desk right now. Okay. So I have, I have an apple over here, which comes from a grocery store. I have a very expensive high-end pen. That was a, actually I won this at a golf tournament. I didn't buy this. It's a Mont Blanc pen, which is actually really nice. I bought I won it at a golf tournament about 20, five years ago, actually more than that, <laughs> maybe 30 years ago at this point. God, it makes me feel old. Anyway, uh, and so that is app, the Apple, and this is a very different thing. And then I have, I have an iPhone over here. That's another company that makes, and these are different industries, right? So the company that makes a pen is not in the same industry as Apple or the actual physical app. I, if I could reach it, I'd bring it over. It's right there, right over here. You know, that, that comes from a local grocery. Actually came, I bought it from a farm. On a, on the, at the market on Monday, what's today? The, yes, this morning, actually, this morning. So anyway, so those are different sectors. Now the S&P 500, depending on how you slice it, and believe it or not, some people actually argue on this, which is to me a little bit silly, but really the S&P 500 has 11 sectors. Let me quickly walk you through these. And you can also do this. And, you can, and by the way, I'm going to quickly show you. I'll share my screen here. I realize some people are going to be watching here. A lot of people are going to be listening to this on the podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. It doesn't, it's not that important. And this is how we're going to do these podcasts going forward, where whether you're listening to it, just the audio, or you're watching it, it's not, it doesn't make a big difference. Like it, it, we're, we're, we're going to give you hopefully the same exact awesome experience if you just, just, and just listen to, to the actual podcast without, without video. So if you look at the S and P 500, and again, it has, it has a, a sector. Let me quickly find the sector thing here. Here we are. Okay. It has a bunch of different sectors. So specifically the sectors are as follows. 
So we have the information technology sector. We have the healthcare sector. We have financials, consumer discretionary stocks, cons communication services, industrials, consumer staples, energy, utilities, materials, and real estate. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sectors. Here's the thing. They're not all created equal. I am sure by now a lot of people have heard that the technology sector has a very heavy weight. We've talked about it, in fact, here probably on countless podcasts over the past nine, 10, 11 months or however long we've been doing these things now. Information technology, so that's technology, is 28-ish percent of the S&P 500. So by simple math that even I can do, it's a little bit less than a third of the S&P 500. Next in line is healthcare. That's important, right? That includes uh, a lot of different stocks from drug companies to managed uh, health, managed care and all sorts of things. That's 13.6%, call it 14. Financials, which is banks and that kind of stuff. Insurance is 12%. And then it just decreases consumer discretionary stocks, 10, 11%. Communication services, which is 8.5%. And that's, by the way, basically tech. So just as an FYI, and I mentioned this a few podcasts ago, that communication services, for the most part, is actually tech because it's basically made up of meta, the Googles, like the class A and B, or if, I think that's how they define it, and a couple other ones that are basically tech stock. And even in the consumer discretionary, Amazon is actually a consumer discretionary stock. So there's a lot more tech, by the way, in, in the market in the S&P 500 than just 28%. I think it's probably closer to 40%. So basically, the S&P is a tech index. That's just how we are, we're, we're, how it is. So anyway, but these are 12 different sectors. Now, a diversified portfolio will have probably allocations for all these sectors for the most part. Where people get really excited about a strategy like this is where they want to be more tactical. So one of the models that we run at Blue Model, and that's one of the portfolios that I manage, is exactly that. It's called a sector and group rotation strategy. And I'll tell you about a couple of different ways in which we can one can execute on that strategy, meaning whether one just basically rotates in and out of a bunch of ETFs which I'll talk about here in a minute. I'm going to give the ETF list as well. Only one uses options to express those 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 allocations, or and even ops can be done in different ways. We can do it with directional trades, like calls or puts, or call spreads or, or put spreads directionally, or one sells option spreads, which is of course as many of our core strategy that we do with options credit spreads in a very specific and unique way that's yielded about thirty percent per year over over the years on average. So. When we look at the sector rotation, there's going to be time to be in certain stocks or sectors and other times when it's not worth being in, in, in those sectors. Like for example, this year, as I'm recording this, the technology sector of the S&P 500 is up a lot. It's up something like, I'm gonna just quickly look at the Q, which is not exactly the tech sector. It's the XLK would be the ETF, but it's up about 37%. It was up about 40%. But then you look at something like, Consumer staple stocks, they are basically uh, basically down actually now on the year again. They're down about 3% on a year. Material stocks, the XLB ETF, is actually down on the year for 2000. Actually, no, sorry, it's up a little bit, a couple percent. Energy stocks, another one, uh, these are actually down quite a bit for the year, but maybe 8 9%, depending on when you look. So arguably... From a sector and group rotation perspective, I could have made a lot of money if I was basically overweight or like in an extreme case, and this is not advisable, but an extreme case, only in, invested in the technology sector, which again, it, as I just mentioned, was up 37, 38% or something like that. And basically even maybe short energy. So that's what group and sector rotation is all about. In order to make that work, however, that kind of a strategy, what we need to do is we need to understand where we are in the economic cycle. That's important. Now, we can use some simple technical parameters and try to make sense of this. But like I always say, making money in the markets goes way beyond trying to use, use a, a simple trend line in the markets and calling that analysis. They are, the markets are much more complex than that. But just to kind of give you a visual, and again, this is for those people that are watching this on YouTube, I'm just going to quickly show you, and I'll describe this chart to those of you that are listening here. The, let me see here. Uh, let's quickly look at uh, the S&P 500 
as or the XLK as a comparison. So I'm bringing up the technology sector, and I am and I am juxtaposing it to the energy sector. And so for those people that are watching this on YouTube, or again, I'm going to describe it right now for everyone, you can see there's just a huge performance difference between again tech stocks, which are as we set up 37, 38, 40 percent. Uh, and energy, which is down a few, three, four, five, eight percent, depending on which one, which ETF you look at. So what that's called, by the way, is called generating alpha, like in, in market terms. So if we can capture these trends and be out of a certain sector, but in and another one at the right times in the market, in the economic cycle, we can, uh, we can arguably make a lot of money. I think everyone would see that, right? So maybe ask yourself that's something. So if you have a portfolio, an IRA, and let's say in your IRA, you have a bunch of a bunch of stocks that are in the technology space. You probably have a few bank stocks in there. You might have you own some communication stocks like Meta. You might own Google, Verizon. Maybe you own you know industrial stocks like Caterpillar and Boeing. Like those are very different sectors. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you and describe to you what the economic cycle looks like. And I'm actually bringing this chart up for YouTube listeners and watchers so you can see it. But again, I will describe this just as well for you if you're listening out in audio only, which of course we need to respect because podcasts, quite frankly, for the most part are audio only. Understanding the economic cycle is important for a strategy like this because it tells us if we know where we are in the economic cycle, meaning are we at peak expansion and things are about to get worse? Are we coming out of a recession and things are going to get better? Or are we in, are we in, 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 the, in the middle of an economic slowdown, which like right now, for example, I think we are. Depending on where we are, there are different sectors that work at different times in the cycle. So let's just quickly start off with if we're coming out of a recession. So if we come out of a recession, the first parts in the market that are going to do well in anticipation of coming out of the recession tend to be financial stocks and transportation stocks. So what that would mean for me as a portfolio manager is as I start to see and I look through a, an economic recession and I see it ending at some point, I would like to start buying a lot of financial and transportation stocks. There's Dow theory reasons for that. By the way, I'm not going to go into that right now because I'll veer too far off topic and we don't want that because then I get confused and then you get confused and then we have one big confusion thing going on and we don't want that. <laughs> so that's the first part of the market that tends to do well. That's also going to mean that there's going to be other parts in the portfolio that I want to underweight or maybe not own at all, right? Depending on how aggressive I want to be. Once we get a bit later into the economic cycle, into the economic upturn, it's technology and capital goods stocks that tend to do well. And ultimately, basically the rest of the market from ba basic industries to energies, stocks, the energy sector, precious metals even, and, and so on and so forth. Ironically enough, as we start to peak out in, in, in the expansion, what we, what we tend to see is it's going to start to be time to buy healthcare and consumer non-cyclical non stocks, so like consumer staple stocks. That's really interesting. Also really interesting, and this may be the most important part that I can tell you right now. So once we start getting in the peak of economic growth, and we can measure that in various different ways. We can measure it by looking at PI numbers. We can look at it by looking at, un at, at, at unemployment trends. We can look at the housing market. Usually the best thing to do is that you have a concoction. I've I have a couple of models that I built, I adapted and basically from other, from what JP Morgan used to work at and I adapted it a little bit to myself. But the most important sector change to me is as and the easiest one. And I, these words are going to come back and, and haunt me, of course, I'm sure at the next time we go through a recession, but I think buying financial and transportation stocks, because it's very clear once things start to get better. So once unemployment from a rate of change perspective starts to get better and we start to see PMIs and, and so producer, producer manufacturing activity start to get better, that's usually the time when we can start buying financial transportation stocks. As it is right here, right now, so let me just kind of say a few words on this. As it is right here, right now, I think we are going to have a recession. How severe that is, it's probably anyone's guess. Certainly, I wouldn't know. I'll tell you how severe it's going to be. Depends on how big the credit events are going to be. But here's the thing. I think really soon, and when I say really soon, I'm going to say it's possible to happen within the next three months. It's possible to happen within the next six months. But I think within the next three to six months, maybe seven or 
eight months at most, we're likely going to start to see the United States Federal Reserve start to sound a lot less hawkish, meaning more dovish, meaning ultimately they're going to cut interest rates. Before that happens, we will know that they're going to do that at some point in the not too distant future. What we want to do then is buy the living daylights out of bonds. And I've been actually very early on that particular trade. This time around, I've been long bonds now for a year. I hasn't been good, even though I've picked up really nice coupons along the way. So that's mitigated the drawdowns in the actual bond prices and actually helped a lot, to be honest with you, to, blow, to, 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 to cushion the blow. But as we start to peak out and start rolling into the economy, into a recession or towards a recession, that is where you want to buy bonds and you want to and we want to buy utilities. That's really important. Utility stocks and why utilities? So that's like the XLU ETF. And I'll end this here in a second, and I'll give you a list of the different ETF, sector ETFs that I would encourage everyone to have a look at. Buying bonds, which can be done through like the TLT ETF. So there's one ticker, TLT, SHY, that's the short end of the yield curve. Or of course, utilities, the XLU ETF. Why would one buy utilities? Because if interest rates start to go down, which would happen if the rate, if the Fed, starts to lower interest rates as we head into a recession, the relative value of coupon payments of utility from uh, of dividend payments from utility companies. So utility companies are like you come like utility company, your local energy or water company, whatever, they pay good good yields, good, good dividends. They start those Dividend payments start looking relatively much better than the bond market, right? Than bond coupons. We want to be buying bonds as the, the Fed would start cutting interest rates bond prices go up inversely and also of course utility stocks go up so here is the deal i want to give you a list of the different etfs if i can find them here so different etfs okay let me just give you the ticker symbols so write this down information technology is the xlk etf healthcare is xlv financials is xlf consumer discretionary xly communications xlc Industrials, XLI, Consumer Staples, XLP, Energy, XLE, Utilities, XLU, Materials, XLB, and Real Estate, XLRE. So those are your 11 sectors of the S&P 500. Folks, if you're at all interested in having a, a advisory mandate at Blue Marlin Advisors where we literally advise you, week over week, day over day if you want to, even month over month, and call you with new trades, keep... and specifically recommended to your portfolio, go over to bluemarlinadvisor.com, bluemarlinadvisor.com. Hit us up there. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, if you want to try to do this also via trade alerts, go over to thestudytrader.com. We'd love to have you on board and help you out with this kind of a sector and group rotation as well. Thanks so much for listening, folks. We'll see you again in the next Study Wealth Podcast. Until then, be well, stay safe, and uh, be careful out there. I think the market here is going to start getting more difficult. See you soon.